how do you succeed a smartphone like last spring's HTC One? A phone so roundly praised it's still winning awards a year after its release. In other words, how do you top yourself? Well, if you're HTC, you take what you did the first time and make it better. That's the company's strategy with the all-new HTC One for 2014. But can the company capture lightning in a bottle twice? That's what we're here to find out. You're watching Pocket Now, I'm Michael Fisher, and this is our video review of the all-new HTC One. Beauty through craft. Beauty through purity. Beauty through simplicity. These were the tenets HTC worked under when designing the new M8, and the end result is a stunning piece of hardware. Available in three colors, probably the most striking is our gunmetal gray test unit, whose aluminum casing bears a brushed hairline finish that sets it apart without going overboard. But a quick look isn't enough. To fully appreciate the craftsmanship of the new HTC One, you need to hold it. The cool metal casing is completely seamless in the hand, the contours and wide radius corners feeling almost impossibly smooth against the palm, while the crisp chamfers and machined speaker grills up front pay homage to its predecessor. It's a little on the tall side, and at 160 grams it's definitely not lightweight, but the extra mass works for it rather than against it. At 5 inches, the SLCD3 display is gorgeous beneath its protective Gorilla Glass 3 panel, and while the extra camera sensor around back isn't necessarily attractive, it's not quite prominent enough, on the gray version at least, to take away from the phone's overall look. Once again, HTC has crafted a beauty of a smartphone. That beauty continues beneath the surface. The Snapdragon 801 processor ensures a long, useful lifetime, backed up by 2 gigabytes of RAM and 16 or 32 gigs of storage, plus a micro SD card slot capable of supporting an additional 128 gigabytes. HTC also offers 50 gigs of Google Drive storage free for two years with the new device, so those in need of lots of space on the go should feel right at home here. A 2600 milliamp hour LiPo battery provides power, but it's not removable. For connectivity, there's Bluetooth 4.0, dual-band Wi-Fi, an IR port, and 3G and 4G radio packages, depending on region. There's also a new sensor hub controlling the gyro and accelerometer package, giving the one a degree of contextual awareness. That awareness enables some useful additions to the M8's software. Most visible and convenient are the new gesture-based unlock features, which allow you to tap or swipe on the screen to unlock the phone or launch certain apps. This is an idea we've seen used to great effect elsewhere, but here, unfortunately, it's a little inconsistent. To save on battery life and to minimize accidental screen wakeups, HTC has made the gestures contingent on moving the phone first. So while they're very convenient when taking the phone out of a pocket, for example, they're less handy when it's stationary, sitting on a table. You still have to reach all the way up to that power standby key, annoyingly still located on the top of the phone to wake it up. These gestures are very smart shortcuts. We just wish they worked a little more reliably. For the new one, HTC has brought a new version of its third-party UI, Sense 6.0, running atop Android 4.4.2. It's very similar to the Sense we know and love from last year's one. It's straightforward, stylish, and almost impossible to trip up. The somber minimalism of last year's version has given way to a slightly more jovial approach in 2014, with accent colors and a brighter feel overall. We're not crazy about the entire palette, but it's nice to have options for changing up the look of the software. Of course, Blinkfeed is back and more customizable than ever, allowing you to blend social, news, and custom search feeds into one stream of curated data. With plugins for calendar appointments, locally stored photos, and third-party apps like Fitbit, the new Blinkfeed is kind of like a modern take on the old Today screen from the Windows Mobile days. It's much more than just a Flipboard clone. Other changes across Sense 6 are more subtle. The new on-screen button configuration makes a lot of sense. The multitasking panes are easier to see. And if you're a fan of controlling your home entertainment from your smartphone, Sense TV works better than ever. In the midst of all these improvements, there is one disappointment lurking on the M8's spec sheet, at least in terms of metrics, the camera. HTC has decided that 4 megapixels was fine for 2013, and so it's also plenty for 2014. And what's more, 
the company has also done away with optical image stabilization. Now, there are solid reasons for this. HTC told us that OIS is incompatible with its new approach to photography, which uses the dedicated depth sensor of the Duo camera to reduce focus time and to enable more artsy photos. Adjusting focus after taking a photo is a very cool trick. And while it doesn't always work perfectly, those who appreciate bokeh effects will no doubt have some fun with this. Also, while 4 megapixels is still pretty paltry sounding, it's important to note that it's not the same sensor as last year's, according to HTC. While it's kind of ridiculous that the primary camera has a lower resolution than the 5 megapixel front-facing one, it's still capable of some very nice shots. Low light performance is still a high point, though the lower the light, the noisier the photo, and you can still expect some overexposure in some shots. The real improvements to the camera are in software, which has been completely rethought. The new viewfinder is still not as idiot-proof as Samsung's or Motorola's, but what it lacks in fluidity, it makes up for in features. Dual capture has been added, there's a 360-degree panorama option, all the fun filters are here, and manual settings can now be saved as presets. Best of all, HTC's celebrated Zoe feature is back, now with its own app, which will eventually allow for crowdsourced videos. You also get more editing options to hone highlights. HTC absolutely dominates this area. There's no easier way to whip up a quick summary of a house party, for example. And the stock effects do a nice job of covering up whatever deficiencies might exist in the raw footage. On the video front, we're not looking at anything special here. The software stabilization does an okay job of keeping the shot steady when walking, but it's not quite as smooth as on the original one. Frame rate seems to suffer a bit with quick movements, too. On the plus side, colors are nice and rich, exposure and autofocus are plenty fast, and sound capture is excellent. Our focus autocorrect, the sun going in and coming out willy-nilly today, but there's our exposure correction and hopefully you got a sense from my walk earlier of just how well stabilization works on this device. We tested the all-new HTC One over a six-day period between Boston and New York City. Our demo unit is a UK edition, so we were confined to 3G here in the States, but we encountered no reception difficulties on AT&T, and our voice calls were clear. Callers reported that the phone's noise cancellation worked well, and we especially enjoyed the feature of just putting the ringing phone to our ear to answer it. HTC's Boom Sound has become one of the company's most celebrated offerings over the past year, and the all-new one takes it to a whole new level. You won't find a pair of louder, richer, better-balanced speakers anywhere, something you're reminded of every time you stream a song, play a loud game, or watch a movie. Speaking of gaming, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Snapdragon 801 has no trouble handling even the most demanding titles. Asphalt 8 plays very smoothly in full resolution, as do Riptide GP2 and Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy. Odds are, if you can think of an Android game, the new one can handle it, no sweat. As usual, though, go easy on the gaming if you want the phone's power pack to last. While HTC's new Extreme Power Saver will help out once you get down to the dregs of your battery, that just covers the basics. We have more detailed information on battery life in our full written review linked in the description below. In the world of smartphones, the very best products are those which deliver consistency across the physical and the virtual. HTC did it with the first one last year, and it's done it again with the M8. From its refined, almost luxury-grade construction to its rock-solid, feature-packed software, the all-new HTC One is an absolutely stunning smartphone. It's not quite a grand slam. We'd like to have seen more from its camera, and some of its new features are less consistent than they should be. But looking at the Android landscape in 2014, it's tough to see any competitor being able to live up to the all-around quality this package delivers. Put simply, HTC has done it again. 
Once again, for photos, benchmark scores, and much more granular information on the all-new HTC One, check out our full review. It's linked in the description down below. But also here on YouTube, we have a whole lot more, including a comparison with the older HTC One, an unboxing, and a broader examination of HTC versus Samsung in 2014. Be sure and check those out. But before you go anywhere, please leave us a like if you enjoyed this review, and leave a comment down below. Let us know if you're going to pick up the new HTC One M8 or not, or just what your thoughts on the device are. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.